Which is the right major for you? Mechanical or chemical engineering? This is what we will be talking about today, but before we get started, please be sure to smash the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content just like this that are going to lead you to success. Obviously, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to what our passion is, but a lot of the times that might be an unknown until a later stage in our life. So it's important to understand all of the implications that come with choosing a specific major. Mechanical and chemical engineering are two of the main branches of engineering. And I gotta admit that both seem like attractive majors on paper. But let's dive deeper into the curriculum, job outlook, salary, and prestige to see if these majors are really as attractive as they appear to be so you can make an educated decision for yourself and not have any regrets about dropping 100 grand on the wrong degree after college. Let's start off with an easy question. If you've taken chemistry, biology, and physics in high school, try to remember if you enjoy biology and chemistry, specifically related to the structure and reactivity of molecules and different types of reactions, as well as all of the different chemical labs that you did, like pH measurement, chromatography, and spectroscopy. If your answer is yes, then it's a good sign that chemical engineering might be for you. But obviously there are additional factors that you should consider, which we will be talking about shortly. Now, if you hated biology and chemistry, but you enjoy the mechanics and circuits portion of physics class more, the mechanical engineering might be a better choice for you. Again, this is just a very preliminary evaluation to at least point you in the right direction of either chemical or mechanical engineering. Now, in order to determine whether mechanical or chemical engineering is a better fit for you, we must first know exactly what these two things are. So what the hell is chemical engineering? It's a specialized discipline encompassing the translation of molecular information into the creation and manufacturing of new processes and products such as plastics, dyes, drugs, fertilizers, petrochemicals, food, and even the development of clean energy sources. As a chemical engineer, it all starts with their foundational knowledge in chemistry, biology, physics, and math to create innovative solutions to important industrial and societal problems in a plethora of industries, including healthcare, energy, environmental, electronics, advanced materials, biotechnology, construction, food, defense, and chemical process. Now moving on to mechanical engineering. What in the world is that? In a nutshell, it's one of the oldest and broadest branches of engineering focusing on the design, analysis, and manufacturing of mechanical systems to create products for virtually every industry, including aerospace, automotive, construction, consumer electronics, defense, food, medical, and energy. As a mechanical engineer, you will leverage your knowledge of physics, math, design, and programming to develop things like HVAC systems, airplanes, cars, manufacturing equipment, satellites, and even working together with chemical engineers who are also called process engineers to design equipment for large-scale manufacturing. Now that you have a high-level understanding of chemical and mechanical engineering, how does the curriculum of these two majors stack up against each other. As you probably can guess, both chemical and mechanical engineers take the general set of engineering core courses during their freshman and sophomore year, like math, which includes calculus one and calculus two, multivariate calculus, differential equations, statistics, and some linear algebra. They also take physics one, which is mechanics, and physics two, which is electricity and magnetism, as well as basic chemistry. Chemical engineering majors will also have to take biology. Moving on to the common engineering courses between these two majors, you will have to take thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, heat transfer, programming with a common language such as MATLAB, and an introductory design course intended to build a problem-solving mindset, computer skills, as well as familiarity with elements of engineering design. From this point on, the courses between these two majors will begin to diverge and become more specific. So as a chemical engineering major, you will have to take a lot of chemistry-related courses. Surprise, surprise, motherfucker! In addition to general chemistry, you'll have to take one or two organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry courses, as well as a general biochemistry course. Also expect to take a basic thermodynamics class introducing state variables, work, heat, 
entropy, and free energy, as well as a chemical and biological engineering thermodynamics class focusing on thermodynamics of multi-component, multi-phase chemical and biological systems. You probably already know that chemical engineering is very hands-on, so you will for sure be taking a project-based class where you work in teams on a project and applied chemical engineering research suggested by local industry. For example, if your team was interested in polymer science, a potential project idea could be characterizing the physical properties of natural and silicone rubber. More advanced courses that you would take as a junior and senior include separation processes, chemical kinetics and reactor design, and integrated chemical engineering that presents and solves chemical engineering problems in an industrial context such as process design and dynamics. Now moving on to the mechanical engineering courses. You will take Intro to CAD and Product Design, where you will design and prototype a physical product using CAD, simulation tools, microcontrollers, and various manufacturing techniques. Another course you should expect to take is Manufacturing Processes that introduces a wide range of manufacturing operations, including machining, injection molding, casting, and 3D printing. The curriculum will offer several courses focusing on materials, including mechanics of materials covering stress and strain, as well as a materials science course that introduces how solid materials deform and fail at the microscopic level, as well as strengthening mechanisms. There's a 99.99% chance you will take Mechanics 2 introducing engineering dynamics concepts like momentum, kinematics, kinetics, and energy. You will also take Heat Transfer that will teach you how to design heat exchangers and introduce the three modes of heat transfer, including conduction, convection, and radiation. Similar to lab-based courses that chemical engineering students take, mechanical engineering majors have a similar class called measurements and instrumentation, teaching how to design experiments involving measurements of various parameters like pressure, temperature, strain, and force using mechanical and electrical transducers. You will also learn all about data acquisition and how to analyze huge amounts of experimental data. Finally, Senior Capstone Design class will be the culmination of your undergrad studies and involve planning and completing a project with a team to design and manufacture a product containing electro-mechanical components to solve a problem in some area of mechanical engineering. You'll typically also be required to choose three to four advanced electives from a list of classes. And for any of you who are interested, this is the list of courses that we could take at my school. So to recap, the curriculum for both chemical and mechanical engineering is is equally challenging. We see there is some overlap between mechanical and chemical engineering in terms of thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, and heat transfer. Technically speaking, a mechanical engineer with the necessary job training could become a chemical engineer if they were to take biochemistry, separation processes, and chemical kinetics and reactor design. Similarly, a chemical engineer could be hired as a mechanical engineer if they were to take all of the design, manufacturing, and mechanics related courses that mechanical engineering majors take. So the question to ask yourself is, are you more interested in process design and improvement, like designing reactors with the appropriate flow rate, volume, pressure, and temperature to maximize the production of a certain chemical while minimizing waste, energy consumption, water usage, and depletion of non-renewable raw materials? Or are you more interested in the functionality of a product like designing, manufacturing, and assembling the reactor structure using computer-aided design and simulation tools under time and budget constraints such that the reactor structure can withstand a range of internal temperatures, stresses, as well as external forces and can be operated safely and ergonomically by any given user. So now that we have a good sense of what the curriculum looks like, Let's compare the annual salaries of chemical and mechanical engineers to see what the current and future job outlook looks like for these two types of engineers. Let's begin with the salary breakdown for chemical engineers. We see that the median salary is $108,540, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $68,430 and $168,960 respectively. Obviously, things like years of experience and work location will contribute to this salary gap. So someone with 10 plus years experience working in California will probably be amongst the top 5% of earners. The number of jobs in 2020 was 26,300 and it's expected to see a 9% increase in jobs between the years 2020 and 2030, which is above average compared to the overall field of engineering. 
Now moving on to mechanical engineering, we see that the median salary is $90,160 while the lowest 10% and the highest 10% made $58,410 and 141,060 respectively. The median is approximately $18,000 lower than the median salary of chemical engineering because mechanical engineering is very broad and spread out across virtually every industry so we should expect to see a larger variation in the salary. We can see just how broad mechanical engineering is by taking a look at the number of available jobs in the year 2020 which was 299,200. That's 12 times higher than the number of available chemical engineering jobs. So we can confidently say that job security is something you will not have to worry about as a mechanical engineer. Aside from the curriculum, salary, and job outlook, the last component we'll look at is prestige. For some people, it's all about the respect. Now the way I've defined prestige is how well known is the company you work at. And I assume that the larger the company, the more prestige it has. For all intents and purposes, we'll assume that the job title is not correlated with prestige. Consequently, I have evaluated prestige solely based on the number of top 100 Fortune 500 companies that offer chemical and mechanical engineering jobs. It came down to the wire and here are the results. 36 out of the 100 companies offer related mechanical engineering jobs, including Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, ExxonMobil, Microsoft, Ford, GM, Chevron, Dell, Marathon, Facebook, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, Intel, Procter & Gamble, Lockheed Martin, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Tyson, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Energy Transfer, Dow, General Dynamics, Nike, Northrop Grumman, John Deere, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. By contrast, 35 out of the 100 companies offer chemical engineering jobs, including Apple, ExxonMobil, Ford, GM, Chevron, Dell, Marathon, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, Intel, Procter & Gamble, PepsiCo, Philips 66, Lockheed Martin, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Merck, Tyson, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Energy Transfer, Dow, General Dynamics, Nike, Northrop Grumman, John Deere, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. So the amount of prestige you get with mechanical engineering versus chemical engineering is for all intents and purposes equivalent. And there will be lots of opportunities to land a job at a big name company for both disciplines. All right, summarizing everything we talked about, the curriculum for chemical engineering and mechanical engineering are neck and neck in terms of difficulty. What's common between chemical engineering and mechanical engineering is the math, physics, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, heat transfer, and problem solving mindset. While chemical engineering classes focus on developing molecular knowledge for process design and improvement, mechanical engineering classes are geared towards students wishing to gain expertise in product design, manufacturing, and engineering computation tools to develop products rooted in mass, motion, forces, and energy. Moving on to salary, the median salary for chemical engineers is $18,000 higher than that of mechanical engineers at $108,540 based on the data that we saw. But the job market for mechanical engineering is 12 times larger than chemical engineering with almost 300,000 jobs versus only 26,000 jobs. The projected job growth between 2020 and 2030 for chemical engineering is above average at 9%, while mechanical engineering should expect to see a growth rate of 7%, which is average. Finally, the prestige level that comes with mechanical engineering and chemical engineering are both 10 out of 10 if I had to give it a score. And you will have no issues finding a job at a big name company, regardless of which one you decide to pursue. At the end of the day, the goal is to pick a major that you can build a career out of and enjoy doing for a lifetime. There is no right or wrong answer when it comes to choosing mechanical or chemical engineering. You might be someone who knows that your dream job is to do process design optimization in the petroleum industry or design propulsion motors at Tesla. I think knowing what you want already in college is fantastic, but rarely is that the case and more often times than not, you won't know exactly what you want to do until after college. 
If this applies to you, I recommend sticking with mechanical engineering for its exceptional versatility and job security. And then if you're someone who finds mechanical and chemical engineering to be equally attractive, well then you're out of luck. I'm just kidding. I will recommend mechanical engineering for the same reasons because you always want to start broad and work your way in. You can still become a chemical engineer simply by taking several advanced chemical engineering courses or joining a research group specializing in some area of chemical engineering, such as fuels and energy at your school. All right, if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.